Okay, here we are, segment two of the Homeowner Association series. And in this segment, we're gonna talk about single family home homeowners associations. Now this is not to be confused with community associations and we'll get to that in a little bit. But community homeowners associations are generally found in neighborhoods of single family homes. They're typically in gated communities or they're golf course communities or they're simply built in a neighborhood by one developer or a couple of developers generally built at the same time. Now these communities tend to have common well-defined areas and landscaped entrances or uh, community parks. They have clubhouses sometimes, swimming pools, tennis courts, these kinds of things in which they all share. And the purpose of these HOAs, again, is to spread the cost amongst all of the homeowners in the sharing of the maintenance and upkeep of these common areas. Now, many times these HOAs are also there to preserve the aesthetics of the community. And why do they want to preserve the aesthetics and the way that it looks? Well, typically, this helps to keep the prices of the homes elevated. I mean, let's be honest, nobody wants to live next door to that guy that has six rusted out cars sitting on his front lawn. Now, homeowners associations became very popular in the late 1960s. People began to notice that the developments that formed these community associations tended to retain their value, while those that were not protected by any covenants or rules tended to decline in value. Now, some HOAs tend to be a little more strict than others. Some of them may require to get approval for the color of the new paint of your house or the type of shingle that you want to put on your roof. You may not be able to park your work vehicle in your driveway or build a shed in your backyard. And it's understandable that there's a lot of people who don't want to be told what to do with their own property. So it really becomes a personal preference at this point to decide is the aesthetics and the value of your home more important to you or do you want to be able to do what you want to do with your home? And that's an individual question for each person. Now, a community association is a completely different beast. The community associations are not required, they're not mandatory, they're strictly opt-in. So if you own a home, you volunteer to pay dues to keep up the common areas. And the board really has no punitive authority, so they can't fine you or really enforce anything. So these community associations are put together to really hold together a community feel. They want to keep up the aesthetics and they want people to get to know each other. And sometimes that's a good thing. Don't forget to follow the next segment.